What is up, team? Today we're talking quadratics. We're going to do some graphing and analyzing of these graphs. So here we go. Uh, learning target says I can graph a quadratic as well as identify its vertex and whether it's a maximum or a minimum of the function. Let's drop these words and dive right in. We're going to analyze two quadratic functions today. Uh, we're going to fill out a table. We're going to graph it. And then we're going to figure out what the, the vertex vertices are. There's a vertex for each of them and whether it's a maximum or a minimum. And we'll see if we can find any patterns here. So here's our first quadratic we're going to examine. Uh, x squared plus 2x plus 3. We have an a value of 1. There's no coefficient there, so we assume it's 1. Uh, b value of 2 and a constant of 3, which is our c value. Here we're not given which x's to examine. So we, we have to kind of play a guessing game a little bit. Um, and it's it, it really when you start these things off, that's what it is. It's a bit of a guessing game. I my strategy and one I'd recommend to you is to always, always, always start with the number zero, the x value of zero. So that's the number I'm going to examine first, and we're just going to see what happens with it. If I plug in zero for x, both of these x's, well, we know that zero squared is just zero. We know two times zero is zero. So the f of x value or the y value is just going to be three. So this function has a point at zero positive three. Well, we don't know if that's gonna be helpful, if that's gonna show us kind of our turnaround point. We're looking for that turnaround point. So let's, let's go above and below zero. So we'll go positive one and we'll go negative one. And we're, we're just gonna see what happens. We're just, we're just kind of exploring a little bit. So I'm going to start with the negative one. Uh, and what's going to happen here is we're going to do negative one times negative one, negative one squared. That's positive one. Hmm, where should I write this? How about off here to the side? One, two times negative one. Well, that's negative two. And then plus three is three. So one minus two is negative one, plus three is positive two. Okay. Let's examine positive one and see what happens. One times one is one. 2 times 1 is 2, and 3 is still 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's 6. Okay, here's where I'm going to put my thinking cap on a little bit. This 6 number, it's, it's not a huge number, but it's getting bigger than what I'm probably going to end up working with. If there's a bunch of 1s, 2s, and 3s, and all of a sudden my numbers are getting big like this, um, I'm going to assume that it's going to, we're going to go in the other direction. So I'm going to explore the negatives, and again, I'm just going to see what happens. Maybe I'm making the wrong guess. We'll find out. We'll find out. So let's see what happens if we plug in negative 2 for x. We're going to do negative 2 times negative 2. That's positive 4. Uh, 2 times negative 2. That's minus 4. Plus 3. 4 minus 4 is 0. Plus 3 is 3. Oh, hello. That, this, this is good. This is a good sign. So we have a potential turnaround point if we did our calculations correctly. So this would mean that our turnaround point is at negative one, zero, or sorry, negative one, two, and then notice how these are both threes. These uh, quadratics are always gonna be symmetric. So we're gonna cross our fingers, of course, we're gonna, we're gonna check this out, but we're gonna cross our fingers that when we plug in negative three, if we get six as our f of x value, we're in really good shape and we're done kind of figuring out our x's. The reason why we said six is because, well, we have a six on this side. So we have two in the middle, then they go up to three, and then, Hopefully, they go up to 6. So let's see what happens. Negative 3 times negative 3, well, that's positive 9. 2 times negative 3, uh, that's negative 6. And we're going to add 3 to this. 9 minus 6, positive 3, plus 3 is 6. Bingo, we've done it. Good deal. Good deal. So we started this with kind of a guessing game. We started with 0, we grew from there. Um, and then we chose to go with the smaller y value and it ended up paying off. We, we, we chose correctly here. Let's plot our points and just see what happens here. So negative three, positive six, negative three, one, two, three, and they'll go up six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. oops, I labeled this incorrectly, go me. Here we go. Uh, now negative two, positive three, one, two, three, negative one, two, negative one, positive two, zero, three, one, six. 1 over to 6. Okay, 
when we connect the dots, check it out. We have created our, our U shape or our smiley face, and this one happens to open upwards. Cool, that's good. That's exactly what we we're hoping for. This turnaround point, turnaround point, negative one, comma two, has a special math name. Uh, turnaround point is not mathy enough, unfortunately. We call it the vertex. This is the vertex. Every quadratic is going to have one um, because every quadratic, when you graph it, has a shape that looks like this. And this shape, we call that a parabola. So this is a parabola that opens upwards with a vertex of negative one, two. So those are some of the new words. You're going to want to know parabola. You're going to want to know vertex. A third term you're going to want to be aware of is, well, this parabola happens to open upwards. So the vertex is at the very bottom. We call the vertex in this situation a minimum. So we'd say the minimum, minimum, wow, mi yikes, it's an I M. Cool. The minimum here is when f of x, or y, then you know they're synonymous here, is 2. Because that is the y value or the f of x value here. Remember, that tells us uh, how far up and down we are on a graph. So minim some of them are going to have minimums, some are going to have maximums. This one uh, is going to have a minimum because it opens upwards. It's got a, it's got a floor, like a floor level uh, point here. Some of them are going to be pointed upside down like a frowny face instead of like a smiley face. Those are going to have a maximum. So let's explore one, uh, another one. And again, we're just going to see what happens. Here we have a negative x squared minus 4x minus 3. So a value of uh, negative 1, b value of negative 4, c value of negative 3. Uh, similarly, we're going to start with our zero, playing our guessing game again. When we plug in zero, uh, zero squared is zero, negative zero is zero, uh, negative four times zero, zero, minus three. Okay, well, zero, negative three, simple enough. Uh, let's go above and below, see what happens. We gotta be extra careful here because uh, this, it's a negative x squared. This means that x is being squared, and then we're going to negate that. So remember PEMDAS, we do exponents before we do uh, minus or negatives here. So negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, but it's going to end up being negative because this negative forces its hand. So it's negative 1 minus 1 times negative 4. Sorry, 4 times minus 4 times negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. But it's minus a negative 4, so we're adding 4 here. The, the negatives can get really messy here if we're not extra careful. And then we have this minus 3. So negative 1 plus 4. Uh, negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. Minus 3 is 0. Okay, cool. Let's plug in positive 1, see what happens. 1 times 1 is 1, but it's negative because that negative sign forces it. Minus 4 times 1, which is 4 minus 3, that's our constant. Negative 1, minus 4 is negative 5, negative 8. Okay, again, similar to the last one, when we ended up with that 6 down there, I am going to go the other direction. I'm going to go the direction that's where that y values, or the f of x values, um, are getting so they're not, uh, not so large. Uh, and we're just going to see what happens. Maybe I'm guessing wrong. I don't know. So I'll try negative 2. And again, we just have to be extra careful here with our negatives. Negative 2 squared is 4, but it's going to be negative. So we have a negative 4 uh, minus two, uh, 4 times negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Minus negative 8 means we're adding 8 minus 3. 4 plus uh, negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4. Minus 3 is 1. Okay, well, this is starting to look a little funny, but it's, this number is getting bigger, which is good. Um, I'm going to keep exploring in this direction. I'm feeling, I'm nervous, but I'm feeling okay about it. Uh, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, but it's going to be negative because of that negative sign. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, but it's a negative, negative, so we're adding 12, and oops, it's a minus 3. Negative 9 plus 12, sorry, that's because it's a negative, negative. I said it, but I didn't write it. Negative 9 plus 12 is 3. Minus 3 is 0. Oh, hello. We might have found a turnaround point. We might have done it. The way, only way to confirm it is if this negative 4, when we plug in negative 4 for x, 
uh, the y value better be, we're hoping it's a negative three, because then it's symmetric. We have our turnaround point, and then we have two zeros, and then we have the negative threes. And if we kept going, we'd find negative eights here as well. But I'm happy with five points. So let's do the negative four and see what happens. Negative four times negative four, positive 16, but the negative sign forces it, so it's negative 16, minus four times negative four. Okay, four times negative four is negative 16, but it's minus a negative, so we're adding 16 here. It's gonna be zero minus three. Cool, we got the minus three that we had hoped for. Good deal. So we have our five points, negative four, negative three, negative three, zero, negative two, one, negative one, zero, zero, negative three. And this one negative eight, it's true, it's part of the function, but it's, I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna use five points. So. Uh, let's, let's do this. Negative four, negative three. Uh, shoot. I'm going to erase all this stuff here. It was good. It was helpful while we had it. Now it's a little annoying and in the way. Here we go. Okay. Negative four, negative three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. There's our first point. Negative three, zero. One, two, three, zero. Negative two, one. Negative two, positive one. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero and zero negative three one two three all right it looks like we have crafted ourselves a frowny face that one points up like a smiley this one points down like a frown and uh so we'd say that this one has a vertex of negative two one which is that point right there that's where this thing turns around it's going in one direction and it turns around at negative two one in this case, the whole thing is opening downwards. So we have kind of our, our, our highest level here. That one has like a, a ground floor. This one has, we hit the ceiling. So we'd say that our maximum in this case is when f of x equals uh, 1. So that's as high as this function will ever go. It's going to go downwards forever. So it doesn't have a minimum because it goes on forever. Just like this one, it doesn't have a maximum because it goes up forever, but it's never going to go below uh, when f of x equals 2. It's never going to go below that line. That's the lowest it'll ever go. Okay, takeaways. The guess, the kind of the guessing game a little bit, how to figure out which x's to use, and then, of course, being extra careful when you have a whole bunch of negatives. This one was annoying, um, but it's, it's part of the game. You've got to be extra careful. Uh, and then once we graph them, once we plot our points, connect the dots, knowing that we have a parabola, so we're looking for that U-shape, the frown or the smiley. And then once we have that, identify your turnaround point, which we call vertex, that's the mathy word for it. And uh, depending on whether it opens up or opens down, you're either going to have a minimum if it's at the bottom or a maximum if it's at the top. Okay, here we go. Let's dive into some practice problems. Let me know if you got some questions. You got this.